This noisy beast is a traditional compressor based dehumidifier which I'm just going to turn off because it's very noisy. Oh that's much better. And this is a modern desiccant dehumidifier and it's a lot quieter. It actually just sounds like a fan because it doesn't have a compressor in it. It's also very light and it doesn't like being, or should I say, unlike the uh, compressor based ones, this one doesn't like being moved about. Uh, the compressor ones don't like being moved about because it disturbs the compressor and the refrigerant uh, liquid can go into the pump compressor and it causes uh, problems. So this is the inside of a desiccant dehumidifier, which is just a completely different style of dehumidifier. Lots of advantages over the traditional compressor based ones. So to start off with, it's got three motors. It's got a powerful motor to drive this fan and this is the fan that moves the air through it and it pulls the air through from the other side and blows out the end here. The next motor is the heater motor and this blows centrifugally again. It blows air up this channel and through this heater block. The third motor is this tiny little motor down here and it's just a standard geared synchronous motor and it rotates the desiccant drum. Right, now looking over on the other side of it I shall just turn this over. Here we go. The air, when it goes in the front of the unit, goes through a filter and then just a coarse filter. Um, hold on. One filter. And the purpose for this, I'll show you why it goes through a filter first. Um, it goes through the condenser, which is a plastic condenser because it will cool the surfaces of this and there's hot moist air being passed through it in a continuous cycle and when it condenses down it drips to the bottom and then uh, drips out of this port here and into um, a water collection container. However, underneath that, I shall just remove this, is the port for the air that the um, air comes out of into the uh, now let's see, oh wait, actually, yeah, the air comes from the, the um, moisture exchanger module into the, um, the condenser, passes up and down and then goes through, this is the, the uh, fan that's uh, passing the, the air through the heater. This is a desiccant drum. It's about one inch thick and it's a, a drum that's kind of... It's a honeycomb type. You can see the effect if I move the camera about that you can see right through it from certain angles. It's almost like corrugated cardboard rolled into a roll, but it's quite brittle feeling. And this is made of what's called zeolites, which are um, hygroscopic materials. They absorb moisture from the air. Now, <coughs> this drum rotates slowly. The little motor on the other side has a gear that just connects to the side of the drum and this rotates very slowly it really is just a continuous slow almost like the maybe even slower than the second hand of a clock it I'm not 100% sure the speed it rotates at but it is very slow um, and as it rotates the air being pulled in the front of the unit gets pulled through the pores of this and any moisture in the air uh, gets absorbed into the surface of this um, hygroscopic uh, material the desiccant it continues to rotate that round through the airflow until it gets into this zone here. And at this point, it actually gets hot air blown through it. And when the hot air is blown through the desiccant, it liberates the moisture out of it. It, it basically evaporates the moisture out and pushes it through this port into the, um, the condenser panel and the moisture then drips out the bottom. Uh, once the desiccant has been dried, it then exits again hot and that makes it very receptive to moisture and it sucks more moisture out the air as it goes round. The electronic controlling this on the top, this is um, well, it's kind of maybe a wee bit too complicated, this unit. It's got a control panel which has various functions, which are actually most of the functions I have to say are quite annoying but that's a minor technicality. They do a simple one which just has on-off, uh, sh uh, should I say, uh, an on-off knob that also sets the humidity level and a uh, high level and low level setting. Now, talking about power, high and low levels, the heater block is the main bit that draws power, but because it's a continuous loop through the condenser coil, um, it doesn't really, you know, it's quite efficient. So 
on the lowest setting, these units tend to draw 300 watts, which when you add it up, you know, that's, it sounds quite a lot, but in reality, compared to the 150 watt compressor based dehumidifier, it's much more efficient. Um, they do have a high setting of 600 watts, and I did a, a test, I measured how much uh, it cost to basically fill the water container. I'm just seeing, is there, no, I've not got it. Yes, I've got a water container. It fills this water container, it fills it to the brim uh, very quickly. There's a wee magnetic switch in the side as well down there, um, a, ma a magnet on a float, and then there's a switch actually in the side of the unit. And to fill that container of water, I'm not sure it's capacity, it's pretty high, it's heavy when it's full. Um, it drew about, it cost about 78 pence to consistently at the low setting, and it cost about 82 pence at the high setting to fill the same container, so it's actually slightly more efficient at the low setting. Um, also, another nice advantage of these things is you're continually getting a flow of warm air out. It's not going to, it's not a real power eater like a one kilowatt or two kilowatt heater. But um, it's nice that it does put out the continuous flow of dry air. It's also so efficient at taking moisture out of the air compared to the traditional compressor uh, dehumidifiers because it works at much lower temperatures. Um, most compressor-based dehumidifiers are designed for a fairly warm room, round about 20 degrees centigrade, which is around probably about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And when they're, that's their optimum level at which they'll take um, the most moisture out. But Compressor-based dehumidifiers are absolutely rubbish at lower temperatures, um, although air won't actually hold much moisture right down to, it progressively holds less moisture right down to zero degrees when it can't hold any moisture at all. But uh, these compressors, the, not these uh, dehumidifiers, the desiccant ones, are not bothered by temperature. They will quite happily work in a cold building um, and will just run until they've brought the humidity in the room down to the to the set level. And they do that quickly. Um, they're very, very good. I'm really impressed with these. Inside, you've got the mains coming in. The first thing that happens is the live goes through a um, safety circuit, which goes through two thermal cutouts, one in the heater block itself and one on the exit port after the desiccant drum. Uh, they are one-shot thermal fuses. They're like a last resort. Um, so you you know it's not good if they trip. That's like the unit is rendered out of operation until you get it professionally serviced to have those uh, things changed. The power then comes back in and goes straight to the heaters without going through the internal fuse through these two small relays. There's a couple of small relays, little cube relays down here, and they've got snubber networks and output just basically a uh, capacitor and a hundred ohm resistor. The feed then goes through this little fuse down here and feeds the rest of the circuitry. And unusually, things like the motor, they have a common live feed and then the neutral is switched through um, a bank of six triacs, six tiny little TO92 type triacs here. Slightly bigger one there for the uh, highest speed setting the motor. The, not all the triac positions are filled in this unit because it's the, it's the basic model, electronic module, which doesn't have the ionizer, which isn't really needed anyway in my application. So it's got um, one of these triacs switches on the heater fan. One of them switches on the... Um, they call it the in-phase. I'm not sure why they call it the in-phase. It's actually the little motor that rotates the drum, the desiccant drum. And then the other three are switching the motor between low, medium and high speed settings. The motor on the fan is a pancake motor. It's quite a chunky thing in there. Um, and it's got a little capacitor knocking about. Yeah, there's the capacitor, which is, I'm guessing it's a run winding capacitor for that type of uh, motor. Quite a beefy thing. It puts out a fair amount of air. The controls, it's a, a small ribbon cable, goes to the control panel in the front. Uh, you, there's two thermal sensors, again, one in the input, uh, one in the uh, main heater block, the back heater block, to detect the temperature of the casing, and the other one on the airflow output. I'm guessing that the one in the casing is just a sort of over-temperature condition detector, and the one on the front where the air is coming off the desk and is probably to um, just monitor the, the correct temperature of the air so they can cycle the, the heating elements on and off as needed. Um, after that there's one humidity sensor and the magnetic switch plugs in there. 
um, for detecting when the wash tank's full. The humidity sensor is tucked onto the casing. Right there. Um, and this actually got some active circuitry on it. There's a chip in there. Not 100% sure what it is. Can't really read it. It's covered in a set of gunk as well. So that's it. A desiccant dehumidifier. I kind of like these. So far I've had no problems with them whatsoever. They, they really do a great job of sucking wash out the air. Um, and they're very, very quiet. You can easily sleep in the same room as in because um, at the low setting, it just sounds like a fairly powerful fan running in the background. It's not a disturbing noise. And um, certainly, the, this house uh, is quite close to the coast, so it had sort of moisture, humidity problems. And uh, when I first got this unit, it ran all day for a couple of days, um, just sucking water out continually. And since it's got the level down and it's all come out the walls, it's it's proven very good. It doesn't run much at all, only when uh, you get those days that it's quite uh, humid outside and there's a strong wind that's forcing air in through the, the building. So um, much better than the compressor ones. I really like these units and very simple too. Um, the, the whole air passing through the desiccant type thing. All very interesting.